In this video, I'll teach you one of my favorite skate skiing drills. I call it the one skate dance, but it goes by other names too, like the box drill. It helps with this technique, which is called one skate or V2 skate. The one skate dance drill is done in two parts. The first part you can practice anywhere, anytime. You can be on skis, but you don't have to. The examples in this video will be demonstrated off snow. The second part is done on skis, either on snow or on roller skis. Before I get to the drill, I should tell you that this video is from the member-supported website NordicSkiLab.com. We have loads of videos of expert skiers and the cost of a membership is very affordable. Check us out if you're interested. In the first stage of the drill, you'll learn and practice this movement, which, believe it or not, closely mimics the movements used in one skate. This movement is actually the combination of two movement patterns. The first fundamental pattern that you see here is one of flexion and extension. So um, she works through this posture here where she hinges into her hips, knees and ankles. That's the flexed position. And she alternates between that flexed position and a more extended position. So where she stands a little taller and lengthens out the body. So that's the extension and she also works through flexion. You can see that pattern throughout the movement. And then the second um, underlying pattern that you see is a lateral or side to side movement where she's continually adjusting her weight so that she's supported by one foot and then the other. So we'll start by working on the flexion and extension pattern. So stand with your feet shoulder width apart and you're just going to hinge into your hips while you press your knees forward over your toes. And that'll bring you down into the deeper flexed position. And the landmarks that we're looking for here are we want to see a similar angle through the torso and the shin. And then we want to see the upper leg bone or the thigh bone being a little bit more upright as compared to what you might be doing if you were doing a body weight squat where you would sit back more deeply into your hips. So that's the low position and you just practice uh, working through those angles a little bit just to get a feel for the posture. So let's take a look and see how this relates to skiing. Can you see how in one skate she's working through a similar pattern of flexion and extension and even the landmarks that we looked at um, over in the dry land exercise are very similar to the angles that we're seeing in uh, actual one skate technique. By far the most common error that you'll encounter when practicing this movement is to sit too far back into the hips. So I'll show you what that looks like. Do you see how she sunk back through her hips more deeply and how that changed the relationship between the angle through the torso and the angle through the lower leg. So the thigh angle is still quite similar, but she's out of sync in terms of she's lost that kind of parallel connection between the, the lower leg and the torso. So obviously that's um, something you want to avoid. And here's one more example of a good demonstration of the kind of angles that you want to see, but in a different athlete. Okay, so now you've um, mastered your flexion and extension movement, and now you're going to add the side-to-side -side movement, which will complete the drill or complete the first step of the drill. So in this case, you're, um, you want to move your weight over so that you're on one foot. The other foot can still be uh, touching the ground, but it's unweighted. And the movement works like this. You flex down, keeping your weight on this one foot. So you're flexing into the hips, knees, and ankles as you maintain your position over that foot. Once you're down into your lower flexed position, then you move your body over and support yourself on your other foot, staying low the whole time. And then once you're over on that foot, then you can start to work into the extended taller position. Once you're in that tall position, you immediately reverse the movement on the same leg so that you flex back down. And then once you're in the low position, you shift over to the original foot. Once your weight is on that new foot, then you can extend yourself back up to your original position. So the cues I like to use for this drill are um, down. So you go down first, 
down and then across and that's to help you to remember to stay low as you work your weight over to the other foot and then from there you'll extend up so down across up and what you can see is that it creates this shape that looks a little bit like a square or a box which is why this is sometimes called the box drill so down across and up down across and up. That's the complete movement that you want to work on. Let's go back to looking at the ski technique again so that we can see how this down across up movement relates to one skate technique. So by adding that lateral movement where we're stepping from foot to foot, you can see how that's quite similar to what we're doing in one skate where she's working one ski at a time. And in terms of the down across up movement, you can see a little bit of that reflected in this head on shot. So she, as she's um, got her position, she's positioned over this foot here. You can kind of see how she's in that deeper flexed position and she works up to the top and then she goes down down into that ski and then moves across to her new ski and then once she's on that new ski she moves up during the glide so as it glides she extends her body up a bit so you see that same down across up movement in the actual technique. So in skate skiing, the skis work through a cycle where they are flat on the snow and they glide. And then after a period of gliding, the ski will roll onto its inside edge and she'll push out in the sideways direction. And this down across and up movement that you're practicing off snow will help you learn how to use your skis in such a way that they will naturally work through this action of gliding for a period of time and then rolling onto the inside edge and pushing out to the side. So we're done part one of the drill. Just to remind you, the cues that we used were down across up, down across up. Now before we move on to the second part of the drill, I just want to point out two errors that are very common. The first is when people think about that cue down across up, sometimes they'll take that movement too much into the head and shoulders and it'll look like this. So you really want this movement to be about hinging into the hips and flexing through the knees and the ankles and not swinging the head and shoulders in the down, down across and up pattern. And then the second thing that is very common is people will uh, work down and then instead of staying low across the bottom, as they move onto their new foot, they will step they'll extend their bodies at the same time so they'll stand up as they shift over and I'll show you what that looks like here so he goes down and then instead of staying low watch how he's going to move up so that by the time he's on that new foot he's already in the extended position so those are two things I see quite often that I want to I want you to watch out for and try to avoid now we're on part two of the drill. So you need to be on skis or on roller skis. And you're actually more than halfway through this exercise because learning that movement pattern will have made all the difference now that we're ready to get onto our skis. So the setup is you need to be at the top of a slight downhill and the hill needs to be steep enough that you need to use your poles to help hold yourself on the hill and prevent yourself from slipping away. But you don't want it to be any steeper than that. So if if you're standing at the top of the hill and you release your poles and you don't slide, you need a little bit of a steeper hill. To start with, you just practice that same down across up movement in place just to refresh yourself and start to pattern that movement into, into your body. And then once you feel like you have it, you just release the poles and then continue to make that movement as you slide down the hill. So what typically happens at this point in time is people release their poles and start to slide down the hill. Because they're doing that down across up movement, they're constantly weighting and unweighting each foot. And one of two things will happen. Either they will lift the foot that they're unweighting straight up 
or they will start to push it out to the side naturally and start to use it in a skate kicking action. So if you're finding that you're just lifting your foot up, then go ahead and start to add a little bit of a sideways push. It should feel very natural to push against the inside edge of the ski as you shift your body from one side to the other. So I'll just let that play. Just watch his feet and notice he's continuing to do that down across up movement. And as he does that, it makes it very easy and natural for him to work the skis through both a gliding phase and a pushing phase. Now I want to show you some clips to show you how well this works in a beginner skier. So this is just her second time um, practicing one skate technique. She's at the top of a slight downhill practicing the movements and then she's going to release her poles, continue with the down across up movement down the hill and then see how at the start when she first released her poles and worked through the movement, there's hardly any movement in her legs. There's just the weighting and unweighting of each ski. Here she just lifted her foot, but then she gets going and she starts to push out. So do you see how she started to push out on this leg here? And then I'll let her continue down the slope. You'll see more and more of a skate push as she works down the hill. And then as she does more reps, what you'll notice is that she starts to push a little bit more and more with each pass. So now she's got a more significant push. What happens as people are doing this drill is the further that they push their leg out to the side, the harder it is for them to bring it directly back under the body. So you wanna get that, um, get the body right over the ski so that the base of the ski is flat when it needs to glide that becomes more and more difficult to do and that's one of the reasons why I like this drill is because you go you continually go back up the hill and reset yourself and every time you do that you get yourself into a position where your feet are underneath the body and then the second thing I want to point out is that as you push out so now she's going to be pushing out over here there's a really strong tendency for that to throw the upper body head and shoulders off in the other direction and make it difficult to balance. And that's fine. It gets better with practice. So just keep working on it and it will get easier. So that wraps up the one skate dance drill. I hope you found this useful. There are other ways to progress this exercise and use this method to work on other aspects of your one skate, but I think that's enough for one video. If you like learning from videos like this and you want to know more about skate and classic skiing, then visit us at nordicskilab.com. A membership gives you access to all our videos and you'll find it a very affordable way to learn about cross-country ski techniques. My name is Kim McKenney and I'm one of the coaches. I hope to see you there.